Hi, I'm John from Snap-on, and in this video I'd like to talk to you about choosing and assembling wheel torque products uh, from Snap-on on medium and heavy duty torque applications. The first step is to choose a pneumatic torque wrench. And there are two available that work in our system of uh, wheel torque accessories. They're both three quarter inch drive. Uh, one has a torque capacity of up to 500 foot-pounds, the other up to 1,285 foot-pounds. When selecting a torque product, we always recommend that you uh, use something more toward the middle range of that torque device. So if you're going to be torquing at about 475 foot-pounds or something like that, we'd probably want to go up to the higher capacity gun uh, so that we're working more in the middle of the range. We would never want to use that gun uh, at the upper end of the range all the time. The next step then is to choose our wheel torque extension. Uh, we have two available. We have a seven inch extension, which is what you see here. And then we also have a 12 inch extension. Uh, my preference is to use the seven inch where possible because it's easier to use and less front heavy as we're bringing that gun into the work. Uh, certainly you can use the 12 inch to get more reach if that's required. Uh, next step, step three then, is to choose our impact sockets that we're going to use with the extension. Both 6 and 12 point sockets are available. My preference in this application is to use a 12 point socket. And the reason is, is that as I bring this in and I try to align both the socket and the reaction cup to the neighboring lug nuts, it's easier to get the 12 point socket to line up on the lug nut uh, because I have twice as many points to register on the lug nut than I do if I'm using a six point, but either can be used. Uh, then the next step would be to select my reaction cup. Now you'll find the reaction cups uh, in our catalog or in our promotional flyers, and it's very important that these mate up with the relating socket. And so we have that charted in our catalog for you to be able to see that if I choose this particular impact socket, then I would need to use a certain reaction cup. And the way that I make sure that I'm using the right reaction cup is to make sure that the reaction cup and the impact socket I'm using are the same height. If they're of varying heights, I'm going to get some side load as I go to use this device and uh, I'm not going to seat properly on the lug nut and that's going to give me some problems. As long as I make sure that I made it up, then I'm going to have a nice seating on the lug nuts and, uh, and be ready to go. Uh, so once I place my order, I get my shipment, and uh, I'm going to receive my uh, pneumatic torque device like this with a standard reaction arm. Now what I'm going to want to do is uh, remove this uh, set screw that holds that uh, reaction arm in place uh, because we're not going to use this in this application. This would be used if I was, uh, um, you know, doing construction or some other application. Uh, so I'm going to remove this and set this aside because I'm not going to use that. Now I have my torque extension taken apart uh, just for shortness of the video um, so that we can show you how to assemble this and put this together. Uh, when you receive the shipment that's all going to be put together would need to be disassembled so that I can put this all together. The first step in uh, assembling the wheel torque extension to the pneumatic torque device is to take this uh, splined ring and I'm going to set that down over the top of the spline ring on the pneumatic torque device. So I just align that with the spline and then that sets down over the top. The next step is to install the impact extension. Now what I've done is I've got my retaining ring uh, in place here so that I can drop that down into the groove once I install the retaining pin uh, so that I can keep this all together as I assemble it. So I want to align my, um, my retaining holes with the square drive and then I'm going to install the retaining pin through that hole and into the anvil of the torque gun. I simply drop down the ring and now I've got my impact extension in place. Next step then is to slide the reaction tube down over the top of the impact extension. Now what I want to make sure that I do, there's some threaded holes in my retaining ring and I want to line up those threaded holes with the slotted holes 
that are in the extension tube. So as I bring this down and over the top of the uh, impact extension, I need to make sure that these are aligned properly and then that drops down so that I can put in some set screws that's going to hold this all together. All right. So I'm, there are two set screws, and again, for sort of the brevity of the video, I'm just going to install the one. I, uh, I line this up, get that started into the threaded hole, and then I lock that down, and that's what's going to keep my wheel torque extension locked in place to the pneumatic torque gun. So I'm ready to go. Now I've got my torque extension uh, installed and, and assembled, and I'm ready to add my sockets. So what I would do here then is, uh, again, I've got my retaining rings pre-installed here on my socket and my reaction cup. I'm going to go ahead and take my impact socket. That's going to align to the retaining hole on the impact extension. Uh, again, I'm going to use my retaining pin. I drop that through, slide my retaining ring in place, and I've got my socket in place. I do the very same thing with the reaction cup, and uh, again, align that with the retaining hole. I drop my retaining pin in, slide the retaining ring over, and now I'm assembled and ready to torque. Now the final step would be, once I get this set up, you'll notice that we have a threaded, I'm sorry, not a threaded, but a knurled uh, piece here that allows me to loosen the um, uh, adapter here that holds the socket in place and that allows me to index the reaction cup and size that up so that I can get that spacing right and then when I bring that up to the wheel I can slide on over both the lug nut and the neighboring lug nut with my reaction point. So there you have it. That's how we're going to uh, select and assemble these wheel torque products. And um, to learn more about Snap-on's medium and heavy-duty torquing products, uh, go ahead and check out our video where we talk about the features and benefit of this and actually demonstrate how to do that. And for more information, contact your Snap-on representative today.